Yeah, I think we're ready. Laissez le bon temps rouler. Let the good times roll. This is our Mardi Gras service for 2022. There are not a whole lot of us here in this place. There may be some of us out there on the live stream. But the truth is that when we gather together in the praise of God, we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses that we couldn't even begin to count them. It's the innumerable throng that gathers around not Bourbon Street in New Orleans and in the King of Mardi Gras, but it gathers around the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in his heavenly throne. And so tonight, as we gather together for some songs and we've already had some snacks, we are going to taste and see that the Lord is good. So thank you for coming. Thanks very much to Kim Harlan standing back there in the corner and the help of other people that have made our Mardi Gras service come together today. It was kind of through force of sheer will that we are together tonight. So I'm so thankful <laughs> that we are able to praise God in this unique way. I don't know any other Lutheran churches that have Mardi Gras services, not even those in New Orleans. So I'm really proud of you for being here this night. So maybe next year we'll have a much bigger bon tom relaying, a bigger bon good time rolling. Uh, but for tonight, we're just glad that you are here. So, will you join me now to sing that song that we were just playing as we started up, Oh, When the Saints Go Marching In. Please rise. God bless your worship wherever you are tonight. Lord be with you. And also with you. We are gathered by God to share the, the love, love of Jesus. Jesus. It is wonderful that we can taste with our mouths and see that the Lord is good. He is always doing good things among his people. And so as we gather together to praise him this night, we ought to gather, we ought to speak his word to one another. So we'll continue with the opening sentences for this Mardi Gras service. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him. In, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In, in wisdom, wisdom have you made them all. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. I invite you to be seated.
The Old Testament reading is from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. Hallelujah. Holy Gospel is according to St. John, 6th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. Now, the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and, and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. Also, the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them and filled up 12 baskets with fragments from the barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and they went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. But my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven. And he gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread, always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. 
For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me. That I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and who believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Those are really nice little feast of snacks that we had out there. Some uh, kind of Lutheran Mardi Gras tapas or something along those lines out there. Uh, dessert and appetizers and things like this. And if you're out there on the live stream, I'm sorry that you didn't join us in that. It was really yummy. Something else that was really yummy, and this is going back a few years, was a pot of soup that Marianne made. Had nothing to do with Mardi Gras. Had nothing to do with the gospel today. Well, sort of, maybe. But it was so delicious, and I was commenting and trying to, to, to give Marianne a bit of appreciation, and I said, you know, oh, honey, this is really good soup. And as Beethoven says, and Jacob, our son, who knew that J Beethoven was deaf, said, Beethoven says, what? Because <laughs> he couldn't hear. But actually what Beethoven said was, only the pure in heart can make good soup. And I think it's true. Only the pure in heart can make good soup because out of the overflow of our hearts come not only the words of our mouth, but the deeds of our hands. And I guess by extension, you could say by the recipes that we make. Not to say that if you're a bad cook, you're a bad Christian, but when it comes down to it, when the good that is within us flows out, it's obvious to other people that they can taste and see that something good is going on here. And what Psalm 34 tells us is that what we're tasting and seeing is that the Lord is good. The Lord is good. You probably can tell by the works and the words of a person when things inside are not so good. Sometimes it's in the pitch of their voice. Sometimes it's in their words that they choose. Sometimes it's in how quickly they're saying them or how they're being received. But it's easy for us to taste and see that things can be really bad. Look at a newspaper, if those things still exist, or go on your favorite news gathering site and take a look at the things that are going on in the world today. What are you tasting and what are you seeing? There's a lot of stuff that I would rather spit out of my mouth by the taste. There's aggression everywhere, division everywhere, anger going all over the place, run amok. We can taste and see that there's things that are wrong with the world and with the people that inhabit it. There's a lot that's wrong with it. And I'll just say this. It's not just those folks out there. We can look at ourselves and we can taste and see that things aren't exactly the way they ought to be with our spirits either, right? We can taste and see by the way that our words come out, by the spirit that comes up within us and how people are receiving us, whether things are good or bad with us, because it is out of the overflow of our hearts that come these things. And our hearts, of course, aren't always pure. I hesitate to talk about what's happening in New Orleans and other Mardi Gras cities right now, not pure is probably accurate for what's going on there. This is kind of the feast before the fast. The problem is, is that the world has really stopped fasting. Tomorrow morning is Ash Wednesday, and we're going to begin Lent, a holy Lent, a penitent Lent, and we're going to take what is covert and inside, and we're going to take it and put it outside. And there's a very visible sign of that, that we could put on our foreheads. I also encourage you to put that sign on your heart because that's where Christ marked you with that sign in holy baptism, the sign of the cross. So what's inside of us is very frequently impure. And the cross is a sign that reminds us that what we can taste and see of the world around us, what we can taste and see of the influence of evil and the devil in the world around us and what we could taste and see of the entire creation history isn't always pure or sweet or good or noble or right. 
But the sign of the cross, as much as it's a symbol of death, is also a symbol for us of life. It's the sign of life because the cross isn't full of our bodies. Once upon a time, it was full of the body of Jesus, but he is risen from the grave. And it's out of the overflow of the joy of that Easter morning that we're gathered here for our Mardi Gras, a fat Tuesday based on a really good Sunday. On that day, God opened up his treasure store of life, his treasure store of joy. He gave us all of his good and perfect gifts. He gave, it to them, gave them to us in abundance. And we, every time we get together and remember that Christ is alive and Christ is in us, we are tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. Even though the world around us, the devil who inhabits this world, and we who have to make our way through this world aren't so pure. The Lord is with us, and he makes us pure in heart. The Lord is with us and gives us joy so that out of the overflow of our faith, good things may come. Our songs are the overflow of our faith. Our thanksgivings are the overflow of our faith. The offerings that we give are an overflow of our faith. It is an overabundance. Tonight, we have the ability to come into the Lord's presence with the same kind of joy that one day we are going to have in his company, right there in his presence, when the celebration won't just be for one night a year as we wait to go into Ash Wednesday and Lent. It's going to be a forever celebration. It's going to be a forever rejoicing. It's going to be a forever tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. Because you know what we're heading towards? We're heading towards not a fast, but a feast. The great royal wedding feast of heaven where we, the gathered guests, are also the bride of Christ and he rejoices over us with singing because we've belonged to him. Because he's washed our impure robes in the, his pure blood and made us spotless in his sight. That's reason to celebrate because even if we have to still go through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear any evil because the Lord is with us. And he's with us with joy and singing. So my friends, tomorrow morning, we're going to gather and have that sign of the cross on our forehead and upon our heart. Taking what's inside and bringing it out. What's covert inside and bringing it out. And yeah, our sins are there. But when we bring out our sins to the Lord, what does he do with them? He washes them away. He makes us pure like he is. And then the sign of the cross is no longer a burden for us. It's our joy. It's our peace. It's our reward. It is our song. So, my friends, we have the opportunity now to join in song in this feast before the fast, to call on the Lord, to taste and see that he is good, and to take all of his promises to ourselves. Why don't we do that now by standing and singing, Precious Lord, take my hand.
bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. We confess to you, Lord. Our mouths have not always praised you through our words, and we have boasted in things other than you. Help us humbly hear and be glad that we may taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. We confess to you, Lord. We have yes. sought after other things than you and have let our fears impede our faith. Give us hearts centered on you that we may taste and see that the Lord is good. Those who look to him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. We confess to you, Lord. Our thoughts, words, and actions have not been faithful and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Hear us and save us from our troubles, that we may taste and see that the Lord is good. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives all your sins. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him.
us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, please be seated. Please be seated. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Hungry and thirsty, we come to you, O Lord. And we pray you to supply us with all things needful to this body and life and to teach us to receive your gifts with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With restless hearts, we come to you, O Lord. And we pray that by faith, we rest our hopes and dreams, anxieties and needs upon your everlasting arms and find contentment and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Knowing that you have established your church by your word and spirit and endowed her with the means of grace, we pray for those who serve us in your name. For Matthew, our synod president, Derek, our district president, for Adam, our pastor, and for all pastors and church workers, raise up those who will follow in their footsteps and serve you faithfully on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Knowing that all power is yours, both in heaven and on earth. We thank you for all the blessings bestowed upon us in this nation and for those who govern for the protection of the weak, the punishment of the evildoer, and the encouragement of virtue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Broken and wounded, we come to you, O Lord, for healing, comfort, and consolation. Hear us on behalf of all those who cry out to you in any need especially those we mention now or in our hearts. That your gracious will be done and all be preserved in affliction and raised to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Mindful of the poor and those who struggle with daily needs, we ask you, O oh Lord, Grant the good fruits of the earth and the fruits of our honest labors to supply what we need for the poor and the needy and the unemployed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we do commend all ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please rise as we sing our last farewell, honestly, to Alleluia uh, this evening. i 
As we have the privilege of coming to the Lord this evening, we also have the privilege of the Lord to come to him tomorrow, tonight in praise, tomorrow in repentance. Ash Wednesday, a holy day for us, where we take what is inside of us, not only of our sins, but also our hope, and bear it for the world to see. God bless you as you go forth from this place in peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.